this fourth day of 2019, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and Urban Legion Baseball State Tournament. Tonight's round of the game is between Ashland Coast 77 and Lawrence. First is the left fielder, number 26, Calvin Fellows. And second is the center fielder, number 14, Brandon Fellows. And in third is the shortstop, number 5, Jackson Fellows. And in fourth is the pitcher, number 22, Dominic Cavanaugh.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fino Field for the Massachusetts Senior Legion State Tournament. We're in the semifinals round, and this game features Ashland Post 77 and Lawrence Post 8. Tom Nappy, Steve Watson, Larry Sacklad on the call, Connor Donovan on camera. It's Ashland Legion Baseball airing on WACA TV in Ashland, H. Cam in Hopkinton, H. Cat in Hollison. We are the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Ashland is the visitors team. So let's take a look at the post 77 lineup. Kevin Balowitz, the left fielder, will start things off. Brandon Grover, the center fielder, batting second. Jackson Hornung, the shortstop, hitting third. The pitcher, Dom Cavanaugh, hitting cleanup. Sean Jewett, the catcher, hitting fifth. Cole Glasper and the second baseman hitting sixth. Alex Amalfi, the third baseman hitting seventh. Drew Rancatori, the first baseman hitting eighth. And Nick Calabrese, the right fielder, hitting ninth. Fran Manaya is the pitcher for Lawrence with the rest of the Lawrence defense. Here is Larry Sackla. I was up all night, Tom, pronouncing my R. So here we go, Luis Mejia at third base. Kebla Peralta at shortstop. Annabelle Pena at second base. Christian Barona at first base. Luis Colon, John Batista, and Ivinson Batista. Henry Checo behind the plate. Fran Manaya on the mound. There is your Lawrence lineup. Thank you very much, Larry, as we are just about ready to get underway. This is a crucial game for post 77. They must win to move on. They are two and one in state tournament play. Fresh off a win yesterday, a walk off win over Somerset two to one, courtesy of Jackson Hornung. And of course, post 77 will look to get the offense going today as they have only played three runs in their past two games. So it will certainly be crucial to get those bats going today against a very good defensive Lawrence team. Steve, how did I do with the... Uh, you did fantastic, Larry. I, you know, I was stressing out about this. I'm all very, very proud of you. And uh, did you know Tom was going to learn a second language? <laughs> well, I think he may have with that whole no, no, intro. No, no, he actually is uh, going to. All right, let's stick to the game, well, folks. No, no. Kevin Balowitz stepping in for post 77, hitting a 360 overall, 433 on base percentage. He has driven in five runs, scored eight. And we are ready to get the nightcap underway in the first game of the day. It was Milford falling to Sandwich, six to five. So the way the bracket will work, is if Post 77 is able to advance, they will have to take on Sandwich at 5 p.m. tomorrow evening. They'll have to win that game, then they'll have to battle Lawrence again at the 7.30 nightcap. And they'll obviously have to win that. Lawrence must lose twice, so obviously Post 77 would have to beat them tonight and tomorrow night. But Lawrence, they could have a little bit of an easier road if they just win tonight. All they have to deal with is a sandwich tomorrow. As Manaya is set to deal to Balowitz. And Balowitz gets a piece of this right side foul. 0 oh and 2. And Lawrence might have the simpler road regardless because the rules do state if there are three one loss teams, that whoever wins game 11, which was last night, Lawrence was the winner of that one, they get the buy into game 14, which would be the nightcap tomorrow. Right. So not that this game is meaningless, but it's just a simpler route. That's all. It certainly is. And that's what happens when you win those first three games as Manaya strikes out Balowitz. I understand that the uh, Lawrence uh, team is quite vocal. Yeah. We'll bring up Brendan Grover. Lawrence had a walk-off win last night over Sandwich, 6-5. to five. And For Sandwich, that's their first loss of the entire season. Seriously, they were a perfect 20 for 20 before last night. Yep. Well, I'm glad they got knocked off. Then. How do you like that? <laughs> and I is set to deal to Grover. Fouled away. And Sandwich, of course, had a one-run win over Ashland on Sunday and a one-run win over Milford just before this one. That's why we're starting late. That game went a bit long. A lot of scoring in the early innings. Should Ashland win here and win the first game. Will they have time for a sandwich between games? No. Fouled away. Oh and 2 on Grover. 
Grover hitting a 327 on the season, 407 on base percentage. He's down 0-2. They not being patient at the plate once again. And I taking a good amount of time between pitches. You know, I'll take time here. Wind up and the pitch. Hit high in the air, right side, foul territory. Ranging over is the first baseman, Christian Verona, to make the catch, two away. I'll bring up Jackson Hornung, the shortstop, who was the hero in yesterday's game. That walk off single in the bottom of the seventh to plate the winning run for post 77. Well, I would recommend patience. Sam. Even know where they've uh, seen a pitch. Need to be patient. Lawrence led by head coach Julio Ramos. Post 77 led by Obed, and Horning's hit with a pitch. Yeah, for Ashley, you've only scored four runs in the last two games. A lot of first pitch swings, second pitch swings. If they can cut down on that and try and grind out at least a few at bats, make the pitcher work a little bit, then that'll generate more offense. You know, you, you're playing elite teams this time of year. Right. You know, so. You're not going to have some of the 13-1, 15-2 wins you had against zone five teams who are kind of rebuilding. You know, you don't have those kinds of teams here. So, yeah, be patient, grind through, and get something that you can hit. Yeah, exactly. And, and, if it, and you know, if you grind through it and you wind up walking, that, that's, that's fine too. Key play on Sunday, I think, was a, a batter, post-77 batter, just called time. Checking at first, and that'll get away. Hornung is going to march up to second base. And is he going to go to third? Yes, he is. The throw is going to be off the mark, and Hornung is aboard at third base. An errant throw by the pitcher to check over. And Hornung all the way to third base. What do we call that? Air mail, special delivery. Yeah, he won the whole way. I think he just got a little too excited there. We'll see if Dom Cavanaugh can take advantage of the situation. There is two outs in the inning. And hopefully you can. They just handed you three bases for free. So you, right. you can capitalize and get that fourth one. How about take a pitch? How about doing me a favor? Yes. Take a pitch. You have a man on third. You don't need to be too aggressive here. 383 for Cavanaugh on the season. 532 on base percentage. Anaya deals. Gets a piece of this one over to center field, and it's caught. Third out of the inning, we'll head to the bottom of the first. We are scoreless here on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Continuing on to the bottom of the first inning, let's take a look at the lineup for the home team, Lawrence Post 8. Leading things off is Kevlar Peralta, the shortstop, Anibal Pena, the second baseman batting second, Louis Mejia, the third baseman hitting third, Christian Verona, the first baseman hitting cleanup, Henry Chaco, the catcher, hitting fifth. Ivinson Batista, the right fielder, hitting sixth. John Batista, the center fielder, hitting seventh. Louis Colon, the left fielder, hitting eighth. And Brian Guerrero, the DH, hitting ninth for Lawrence. With the post-77 defense, here is Larry Sacklad. Thanks, Thomas. Alex Amalfi playing third base today. Jackson Horning at short. Cole Glassburn at second base. Drew Rancatori at first. Kevin Balowitz, Brandon Grover. Nick Calabrese patrol the outfield. Sean Jewett behind the plate, catching Dom Cavanaugh. There's your post 77 defense. Dom Cavanaugh has pitched 23 innings this season for post 77. A 213 ERA, three wins and one loss to his credit, and he has struck out 26 hitters. Humidity is on the brutal side, Tom. Yeah, temperature is at 83 degrees, and I don't know about you, Larry, but I'm feeling a nice breeze right now. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll take that all night, right? <laughs> it's a lot less humid than yesterday, that's for sure. And it could be worse. You could have played in that game at 5 o'clock with yeah. the sun out and been roasting out there. And, and it are, wasn't a quick game either, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. When things aren't going well, just talk about the weather. That's <laughs> Correct. <what we're> <laughs> first rule in broadcasting. <laughs> so in that first inning... The pitcher for Lawrence, Fran Manai, only threw eight pitches. And Larry, you've been preaching patience at the plate 
All-State tournament long. We'll see if that improves throughout this game. Well, let's see what uh, Dom Dominic can do with his tempo on the mound. Pitch when he wants to pitch. Peralta steps in and Kavanaugh is set to deal. There's a strike. Actually, I like that pitch selection on pitch number one. Very athletic bunch, these Lawrence Post-8 kids. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, one and one. And with Lawrence back in the tourney's first time since 2015. That's all right. Uh, with Ashland, they were here at Fino two years ago. How'd they do? Oh, they went two and two. Fouled away. So if they can win tonight, they'll have a better result than 2017. Mm -hmm. So, although I remember that year, they did win the first two and it didn't work out for them. So perhaps splitting the first two this year might work out. Who knows? I think That's Ashland right. uh, played four games in 2017. Yep. Here is the one two. And this is hit in the air over to left field, and that'll drop in front of Balowitz, a leadoff single for the leadoff man, Kebler Peralta. That'll bring up Anibal Pena. They've got a very impressive run game, so keep an eye out for speed. Lowry has scouted. I have scouted. I've toiled many so we have hours right, Tom? Fino That's right. Field. <laughs> Had plenty of sausages with onions and peppers to prepare for this game. I'm going to take it that you like the concession offerings here. I do. Good. The lead for Peralta at first, as this is a little trickler up the right side of the infield. Throw to second for one, and that's all they'll get. So Pena reaches on the four to six four so. Yeah, Not he, pretty, he never really had a chance pretty. to two there. I had to throw that off balance. Not pretty. And his high school coach is here to see it. But he's not his high school coach anymore. Correct. Colby on his own. <laughs> About a month or so. Louis Mejia steps in. Well, his co college coach could turn into YouTube, couldn't he? Yes. Yes, yes. We are on YouTube Live. That's right. Sean Jewett wants a word with Kavanaugh. I believe we have a viewer from Naples, Florida that just tuned in. Tremendous. 3,000 miles away. How do you like them apples? Kavanaugh working from the stretch. Runner on first. No outs check in. Runner back safe. You know, Dom's got uh, quick feet. Deceptive. And a short throw, not a big, long pickup moment. Close call there once again. Maybe that was the strategy in the dugout. If you've got a runner on, keep him close. He deals. Ball one. Are we broadcasting on HCAM Deportes? Outside. Kavanaugh deals. Another pitch outside. Three and oh. Checking at first. Almost got him, but runner back safe. He's very concerned about him over there. Certainly is. But you have a 2-0 count here on this batter. It's time to throw some strikes. Yeah. You get overly distracted. He's not happy with that pitch either. Do you that know any of these umpires, Steve? I do not. That'll make it 3-0. and oh. I think perhaps a little too focused on the man at first. There's a strike. Three and one. I don't know if Sean Jewett's giving Dom the signal to throw over or what, but he's getting a kind of a greedy lead over there. There's a walk. No, a strike. Get back in the box. Steve, what do you do when somebody runs in the opposite batter's box? I'll tell him exactly that. What? It's a strike. Okay. Checking at first. That was close, but runner is safe. 
I'm impressed. And that's probably the closest one of all the throws that he's had over there. That's probably the closest one. Shooting for that sweep tag down low. And this is up the left side. Gloved by Amalfi. Throw to second for one. Throw to first. Not in time. They get the five to four force up. Two away. Great way to battle back right there. 3-0 count. Throw two straight strikes outside. Battle back to 3-2. Getting out out of that. Tough to go 5-4-3 with this team. Or against this team. Certainly is. That'll bring up Christian Verona, the first baseman. One on, two outs. Kavanaugh deals. In there for a strike. Looks like outside corner. Yep, the, going right to the, the outside corner. And, you know, looks like Dom has picked up on that. And this is hit high in the air, left side, and it is in foul territory now and caught by Kevin Balowitz for the third out of the inning to the top of the second we go. We are scoreless on the Ashton Legion Baseball Network. Top of the second inning, 5, 6, and 7 do up for post-77. Sean Jewett, Cole Glassburn, and Alex Amalfi to face Fran Manaya. A scoreless game as we start the top of the second. Wind up and the pitch outside. Rashland, got to be patient here. Certainly do. You know, he only threw eight pitches last inning. Make him work. And that was ball two. Seeing if he tipped it there, but did not go. Yeah, I think far that enough. Was, I think that one was just sniffed by the catcher. He just muffed it. There's a strike. Absolutely no pressure on Lawrence. They're at the dance tomorrow night, no matter what. All the pressure on post 77 for this one. Up high, good eye there by Jewett. Three and one. Now oh, we got a first four pitch of bat here. Yep, need more of those. Yeah. Grind through, grind out the at bat. Wind up and the pitch. Thought about swinging, but took it instead. Full count. Base hit. Base hit ball four right here, guys. 420 average on the season for Jewett. Swing and a miss. One away. That'll bring up Cole Glassburn. Glassburn has hit the ball well lately. 366 overall, 395 on base percentage. He was the Gandhi Award winner, one of them yesterday, for pitching that complete game. That was just a tremendous performance on the mound by Glassburn. He had a beautiful bunt base hit, too. Even Pushed it. Even came in after the hour and a half rain delay to finish it out. Fouls that one away. You would say you would not see that in the major leagues. You have a, a rain delay of a half hour, and the guy won't go back in. Well, if Cole Glassburn was in the major leagues, you might see it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, that's true. you never know, Tom. He, he is very talented. Here's the 0-1. And that hit him. Second, Second. Yep. Second hit batter of the day, and the umpire pointing down, and I believe he was just confirming with the third base umpire that he was hit by the pitch. The... the Confirming at third was making sure that he didn't swing at it because he did have that check swing. But third base umpire will know he did not go around. Glasper and gets first on a hit by a pitch. Alex Amalfi steps in. You know, he's been struggling with the stick. Slight lead for Glassburn. There's a strike. Wind up and the pitch, fouled away. 0 oh and 2.
There's the 0-2. Held his swing, one and two. He thought about it. He did. Catcher asked for help. Anaya from the stretch. Plasburn at first, one out. That hit him. Third hit batter of the game. Rib job. That will bring up Drew Rankatori, the first baseman. Well, Fran Manaya certainly has good velocity, but very wild in these early innings. Definitely different sounds, Steve, right? From the behind to the ribs. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can hear those ribs kind of crack a little bit, you know, and uh, <laughs> needless to say, it's time for a chat, so we'll have a little conference at the mound. Yeah, well, I will, while we're here, we might as well go around the dimensions of Fino Field. 375 down the right field line. Left field, 346. Left center, 416. Right center, 432. If you can do it, do it. 520 feet to dead center. Oh, field. that's short. That's no problem. Oh, that's Polo Grounds, Ebbets Field. <laughs> well, it's 100 feet shorter than Tiger Stadium, 420. So Drew Rankatori steps in. Mike Atori's hit the ball pretty well as of late. Well, they're giving him the line. He's a pull hitter. Let's see what he can do with Minana. Minaya, pardon me. Wind up and the pitch. Followed into the backstop. Two on, one out for post 77. Two hit batters. That rib shot that Amalfi took must have hurt a little He'll bit. He'll probably be feeling that in the morning. I'm sure. <laughs> Get some ice. Yep. He'll need it. Manaya deals. Down low. I got a text last night from a very well-respected baseball guy. And they threw a lefty last night who was quote, unquote, legit. So they got a lot of arms in the Lawrence dugout. They're probably saving one for that very special game. Yep. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And this is up the left side, bobbled by the third baseman, and dropped by the shortstop. Everyone's safe. Base is loaded, one out. What did I say, a pole hitter? What are you giving that one? Oof. I, e. I'm giving that an error. Okay. Nick Calabrese will step in. It was an awkwardly hit ball, but looks uh, sort of routine. Calabrese, a 294 on the season, 410 on base percentage. Do you remember earlier in the year, he laid down that bunt? He dragged it? A little conversation with Coach Obed. Think, well, first baseman is playing in on the cut of the grass. Nobody's holding Drew Rancatori on. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Who up next is Kevin Balowitz. Well, the last time Post 77 had bases loaded, did not go very well. No. <laughs> Ended up being a triple play, but fortunately, they were able to come back and win as that's fouled away. And fortunately, I was not here for that. <laughs> oh, and two now on. Calabrese. It was left out of the highlights, too. Which <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> because it needs music, musical accompaniment <laughs> to uh, watch that play. Wind up and the pitch. Up high. I'm serious. It was probably the biggest base running disaster I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Well, it was a rare base running mistake by Post 77. Somebody texted me from Kenny Bunkport, Maine, in their boat and said, what the heck is going on there? The one, two. Outside. Two and two. Well, these Post 77 hitters need to be patient against Manaya. He is yep. struggling control -wise. Be patient. Make him work. He's been wild. Got three hit batsmen. He's an inning gobbler, that's all. 
Swing and a miss, out number two. A big out there for Lawrence. That'll bring up Kevin Balowitz, who struck out in the first inning. Top of the second, we are scoreless between Ashland and Lawrence. Bases loaded, 4 post 77. Glassburn at third, Amalfi at second, Rankatori at first. A pair of hit batters and an error. Need a big up, hit right here. Yeah, these Lawrence outfielders can really go get them. So they cut balls down in the gap. Outside. Gave that to Kavanaugh, wouldn't give it to Minaya. That one was low. Yeah. Manaya deals outside. Two and oh. Jerk two in a row. Green light here or no? Well, it's got to be meat. Oh, it, it has to be it's perfect. Yes. Away. Yeah. Or as the coach would say, gotta love it, right? No, it can't be ground beef. It's got to be filet. You're going to swing <laughs> it. It's got to be filet. Prime. This guy always has food on his mind, doesn't he? Yeah. It certainly does. <laughs> All right. They don't feed me at work. Man, is hungry. Manaya from the stretch. Bases loaded, two outs. The 2 0. -oh. Outside. 3 and 0. Oh. A walk would score a run. Catcher's working hard on a humid night. Well, if I'm Balowitz, I certainly hold now. Yes. Make him prove he can throw a strike here. Absolutely. 2 or 3-0? 3-0. 3-0. Three zero pitch. There's a strike. Get me over fastball, Steve. Yep. Three zero. You know he's probably not going to swing. So in that situation, you can probably throw something like that. Here's the three one. And this is hit up the right side, picked up by the first baseman, and he'll tag the bag for the out. So despite loading the bases, no run score, we'll head to the bottom of the second inning. We're scoreless on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the second inning, five, six, and seven due up for Lawrence. Henry Chaco, the catcher, will step in, followed by Ivinson Batista and John Batista. The starter for Lawrence, Fran Manaya, is up to 33 pitches. Certainly had a work last inning through 25 last inning alone after throwing eight in the first. And that hits the batter. Nope, no contact. No. Wow. Did not hit him. If I was the hitter, I might have wanted to take that one. Yeah, although if you take that one off the leg, you might have a rough um, rest of the night oh, out there. You know how Dom likes to pitch inside, Dom, right? Hudson. There's a ball. He's got a good two seamer. Wind up and the pitch. Inside. Headset's not working. Go back to the stick mic. More and more fans are trickling in. B biggest crowd to watch Ashland this year. There's a strike. Dom is tough when he throws that two-seam fastball. Rides right in on the hitter. Sometimes too much. Here's the 3 1. And there's a walk. So, lead man on for Lawrence. A little hot dogging. And he ran down to first, so you got to be on high alert. He could round first, go to second. Yeah, that, but you, you saw it. You know, he, 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 you the know what? A speed demon. He, he just ran. You never know. It's a, state it's a state tournament. This is not the time for snoozing. 
Ivinson Batista, the right fielder, steps in. Steve, come on. You know, sometimes in the state tournament, you see stuff you haven't seen all year. Yeah. Outside, Kavanaugh a little bit wild now. Yeah. I see the Roadrunner on Saturday morning, too. <laughs> that was for a comic relief for their dugout. That's all it was. Look at how little of a lead he's got over there, but a no pitch. Late time called. Who asked, Steve? The hitter. It looks like the hitter asked for time there. Usually a pitcher, the pitcher doesn't have to ask for time. He can just step off, of course. Sean could have asked for it. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. One yeah. and one. That was very, very late time. Because the umpire does not have to grant time, you know. Kavanaugh deals. Up the right side, foul. One and two. Kavanaugh working from the stretch. And this is hit high in the air, left side foul territory, and it's out of play into the stands. Malfi putting in a good effort there. We should see some post-59 players return to the ballpark after their loss. Had a great season. Time called. The one two. Kavanaugh from the stretch. Did he get him? No. Two and two. Not a bad pitch right there. I thought he might have rung him. I thought so too. I would have. <laughs> <laughs> Just being honest. Get out there, Steve. <laughs> this is hit in the air foul behind us. All my equipment's all packed away for the year. Ah. So, is your season over? Yes, I was done on the 14th. So, I've had, uh, two plus weeks off now. Oh, is that why you're out watching the horsies? Yes. Okay. <laughs> in that heat. The 2 2. And this is hit in the air to center field, and it is caught by Grover, the throw to first, runner back safe. It was a great throw by Grover. Is that 90 mile an hour heater from center field? That'll bring up John Batista, the center fielder, one on, one out. That was a strike right there. Lawrence might think twice about how far the runners go in that situation again. He's got an absolute cannon. He's been gunned yeah, he, he just showed it right there. Plus, 90 plus miles an hour from yep. the outfield. An absolute strike, not quite JBJ level, but no. No. certainly, but. Not bad for a. Pretty good for Legion Ball. Certainly is. For the incoming class president of Ashland High. Not bad. There's a strike. Hey, just thinking. He threw it to the incoming president of Hopkins and High. There you go. Press to press, right? Oh, yeah. Somebody's got to write a puff piece on that. <laughs> There's your next assignment, Larry. <laughs> yeah. The L1. Learn how to write. Swing and a miss. So and two. Well, I've noticed with Dom Cavanaugh, sometimes he starts off a little rough, but then he finds his rhythm. Yep, and that's good. Work back into it. We'll see if that's the case today. Here's the 0-2. And this is up the middle. Cavanaugh gloves it. No, he drops it, picks it up, throws the first, gets the out. What a job by Cavanaugh. Had a really hustle there to get that throw over. Fell right out of his glove. Chaco advances to second base. Two away. That'll bring up Louis Colon, the left fielder. That had... Uh Center field written all over it. Two. Certainly did. So Luis Colon set to step in. No relation to Bartolo. No. Maybe distant. How old is he now, anyway? 50? <laughs> he's, he's still pitching, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's 40. <laughs> Somehow, I don't know how. 
What's and your... his weight is 10 pounds per age. <laughs> per, <laughs> per age, yes. Hard to believe that some 20 years ago, him versus Pedro was like the best match in baseball. But he can still pitch. As oh, oh, he as can, he yeah. is. You know what I'm saying? He's been on, I think, 10 teams now throughout the course of his I career. I can't violate so. FCC regulations and yeah. name the diet that he was on. But yeah, he's uh, still chugging, though. Good for him. Like Big sexy, as they call him. Yeah. This is an Anio Chara of baseball. Yes. And he hit home run a few years ago, too. That was fantastic. Kavanaugh deals. Inside and tight. One and oh. Good stop by Jewett. Yes, that's a solid roll from the plate to the backstop here. So very, very important to play good defense. Bottom of the second, we're scoreless between post 77 of Ashland and post 8 of Lawrence. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Not even close. One and one. Just blew it right by him. Sean Stewart's blocking and receiving has improved 100% from 27, 2017. Huge improvement. Runner with a significant lead at second base. Kavanaugh looks at the runner and deals just outside. He was the unsung hero with Cole Glassburn yesterday. He called a great game, caught a great game. It's a good battery. True. Two very high IQ players. Well, good baseball I, sense. No, Cole's very high IQ. Here's the 2 1. <laughs> Swing and a miss. 2 and 2. Sean Jewett's going to Stonehill. He's going to try and walk on. Good school, too. Yeah. Down in Northeastern. Jonathan Rice from Post 59. is Transferring there, yeah. Yep. From Coppin State, I yep. believe I heard, right? Yeah, he struck out to end the, the game for Post 59. Wind up in the pitch. Up the left side, and it's off of Amalfi. And picked up by the shortstop. The throw over to Amalfi, and they got him. What a great flip by Hornung over to Amalfi to get the runner heading to third. Bad and base running. And that'll wrap up the bottom of the second to the top of the third we go. We are scoreless on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the third inning. Set to... Step in is 2, 3, and 4. Brandon Grover, Jackson Hornung, and Dom Cavanaugh. We're scoreless between Lawrence and post 77. Fran Manaya has been a little bit wild so far today, but no harm done yet. Swing and a miss. That is the loudest I've heard the Ashland post 77 dugout all year long. You're into it. The 0 1. Fouled away. What do they say? Cracked foul? Cracked foul. Cracked foul. Yep. Line foul. That may have cleared that fence over there. Not a big Lawrence contingent down the left field line. Here's the 0 2. Down low. Elfield playing straight away. One-two pitch. Inside. Came close to his fourth hit back. Yep. Yeah. Got three already. So he's got the turkey. What's four strikes? Seems like he's having trouble with the lefties. Yeah, he's, he's trying to jam them inside. They're going too far in. The two-two. Inside yeah. again. He's just yanking his pitch. Yeah. He's holding on to it too long. Because when he's got a righty up there, he's you know yanking it to the left hander's batter's box. So he's struggling with his release point. He's probably not in their rotation during the season anyway. All their arms are being saved for tomorrow night. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the middle, slow roller, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first, and he got him. Four to three. 
got him to roll over. That'll bring up Jackson Hornung. Hornung was hit by a pitch in his only plate appearance. He was one of three hit by a pitch for post 77. He of the walk off hit yesterday, game winner. After a long rain delay. Oh. Lined up and the pitch. Yeah, Fino Field has been like a second home to us yeah. this week, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-0. Horner gets a piece of this one over to right field and caught. Two away. You know, the heat, Steve, yesterday was dry heat. I mean, it was blistering heat right off those bleachers in front of us and right sort of right in the, the press box here. And then when the rains came, in just in buckets for an hour and a half, then it became like the swamp. We were swamp on mm -hmm. Tom and I. Oh yeah, the humidity went significantly higher. Ooh. It? Ooh, inside. And uh, that's at the opposing pitcher. So what did you guys do during that long rain delay? Well, Stay up here? Did you go downstairs to the concession stand? I tried to teach Tom some sign language. And ah. he was able to master the first lesson I gave him. Okay. This. You see that? <laughs> oh, hey, that's one way to pass time <laughs> during a rain delay. You know, I learned that as a young man. It's like when Coach Obed was trying to teach you some sign language. Right. The 1-0. There's a strike. Well, Jake does want to be a teacher one day, so start teaching now, right? 1-1. One, one. And this is right back to the pitcher. Throw to first, and it gets away. Kavanaugh is going to head over to second base. Here he goes. He is safe on the errant throw. That was a He didn't have to zing it over there. Third error of the game for Lawrence, and I'll bring up Sean Jewett. What do you think, Steve? I mean, he threw the ball 100 miles an hour. He did. So on that one, the throw was wild, and then it rolls out of play. You get one base by rule, advancing him to second. So right. he could have walked second if he's so pleased. So if Jewett steps in. Closer to third base and he, he whipped it down the right field line it would have been all he could have got yep different angle inside heat one and oh that is two errors now on the pitch two wild throws i don't know he must be one of the younger guys on the team the one oh inside oh, head hello head do we have a warning here? Was that a warning, Steve? No, that's going to be a foul ball. Really? Yes. He's saying it's a foul tip. It hit Sean Jewett's bat. Better than his head. Yeah. I don't think Sean meant to do it, obviously. He's trying to duck down. Right. But they're going to say it hit his bat. Well, a big break there for the pitcher. Yeah, well, the home plate umpire has the best view of that, so only he would have seen that. Tough break right there. And Sean wouldn't have admitted it. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Down low. And that's why they always say to the batter, if you're trying to talk, get your bat down. That way stuff like that doesn't happen. It's a prime example right there. Oh, well, if it's riding in on you, turn your number to the pitcher. Yep. Turn your back and protect your bat. The umpire wants to clean off home plate. My son in the Williamsport tournament did that. He had a 70 mile an hour two seam fastball right in on him from this kid that was six feet tall. He was, you know, lurch. And he turned his back to him and fractured his scapula. Ugh. The, the pediatric uh, orthopedist never saw anything like it. There's a strike. Two so, and two. He sent that x ray around to all his peers. They said, is it an 
artifact, meaning is it something else, a shadow, or is that a fracture? And it was 50-50. And the winner was the, the observing doctor. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Jewett gets a piece of this over to center field. It goes. Kavanaugh is going to be sent around third. The throw home is a good one. The slide, and he's in. one nothing. Bo 77. An RBI base hit for Sean Jewett. There'll be a little argument between the uh, Lawrence manager and the home plate, or discussion. <laughs> I got to admit, that was close. Well, I told you, these, these guys. But I thought the foot hit home plate Foot got there the first. Yep. Yep. Slid right on the tag. No question. It was closer play than it should have been, but those uh, outfielders have got cannons for arms. They certainly do. And that was a great throw by the center fielder, John Batista. But not good enough. one nothing Ashland. Cole Glassburn steps in. Runner on first, two outs. A huge hit there for Sean Jewett. And that is something that Post 77 has struggled with in the early innings. Fouled away. Yeah, Sean's not a threat to steal, so Lawrence Pitcher doesn't know that now, but unless he's listening in. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the middle, takes a couple hops, picked up by the second baseman, and he tries to lay the tag, but did not get the tag, was able to throw it to first, however, but post 77 plates a run. They lead it one to nothing as we head to the bottom of the third on the Asher Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the third inning, 9-1 and two do up for Lawrence. A one nothing lead for post 77. A nice hit by Sean Jewett to score Dom Cavanaugh. And that is just what Post 77 needed. Get some offense going. Brian Guerrero, Kebler Peralta, and Anibal Pena do up for Lawrence. Tom Cavanaugh has thrown 33 pitches coming into this inning. Manaya up to 51 after yeah. three innings. He's in good shape, 11 an inning. And this is a bunt left side, that is foul. Now that's a future UMass Boston player. Used his marbles on that play, let it go foul. Remember that Bill Rickett third baseman that was like a vacuum cleaner? Yes. Yeah, him and Amalfi are going to be uh, stable mates at uh, UMass Boston. The Beacons. The Beacons, yeah. He, he was good. Yep. One and one. Malfi's in on the grass at third base. Kavanaugh deals. This is hit high in the air, left side, ranging to his left to make the catch. Here's Balowitz for the out. One away. That'll bring up Kebler Peralta, the shortstop. This is the kid that the very well respected baseball man was raving about. Great defensive skills. Kavanaugh deals outside. One and O. Oh. Coach Obed shifting the outfield. They're shifting his right fielder. Nick Calabrese. And this is up the right side. That is a foul ball. Not by much either. Hands up or I'll shoot. Is that the... Uh Signal for the first base umpire foul. Hands up. It certainly is. One and one. Oh, 
And this is hit in the air. That'll drop into left field in front of Balowitz. It's a one-out single for the leadoff man, Keebler Peralta. It'll bring up Annabelle Pena, the second baseman. How many times Dom is going to pick over here? What's your guess? Three times? I'll say, I'll say two. Okay, I say three. I'll go one. Outside. Ground ball right here would be beautiful. Yeah, fairly slow runner at the plate. Got a big hole, they're giving him a big hole. Runner taking off, the throw up by Jewett right to second base, but it's not in time. The speedy Peralta with a steal. I guess that's why Don was keeping him close. Put on the Jets. Yeah, but he, he was there in no time, really. One and one. I think I'm going to try that home remedy for mosquitoes, Tom. Runner taking off again, and the throw is going to sail over. But what happened here? The Bach. So Bach is called, so the runner gets to go to third, and no that further. actually... Save them a run. That, yeah. yeah, that saves them a run. Did he not come to the set, or did he just? Oh, he did. He did all sorts of stuff. Started and stopped. I think he glanced out the corner of his eye, saw him going. Yeah. Now you got speed runner at third here. Got to watch him. Yeah, the infield's in all the way around. Swing and a miss. One and two. If you're Lawrence, how daring do you want to be? Do you want to steal home here? You already stole second and third. That one? Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> be an now, now, now that would be an aggressive move. If, if you're going to do it, you certainly would do it with Peralta with the speed. Well, yes. Dom's, Dom's pitching out of the stretch. So, of the full windup, I might say. Maybe. If Dom were a lefty, I'd say probably. Fouled away. Count remains one and two. Do you remember the play when Jacoby Ellsbury stole on Andy Pettit? I was at that game. You were at that game? On the third baseline, yep. That was 10, Come on. That was 10 plus years ago. Oh boy. Yeah, 426 09, Larry. Really? Yeah. 10 plus years already. Wind up in the pitch. Fouled away. Count remains one and two. Now that was the perfect guy to steal on, too, because Pettit was notoriously slow. Right, to the plate. Yep. But he could have got lulled to sleep and Ellsbury just sort of shimmied down the yep. line and then just yeah, he, bolted. He got a huge lead, just went for it and got it. Was it Jorge Posada behind the plate? I believe so, yes. Back in the day. Here's the one two. Up high. <laughs> Strikeout would be humongous right here. Certainly would. Keep that man if there was two down. Surprised Alex Amalfi is not playing in further. And this is hit up the middle. The throw is to home, and the tag is on, and he is out. Jackson Hornung strikes again. A beauty of a throw to Jewett. What an athletic move by Jackson Hornung. Six like a ballerina out there. Six to two on the out. Two away. That'll bring up Louis Mejia, the third baseman. That could wind up being a crucial play in this game. Yeah, that was the furthest thing from a made to order. Six to out. two, yeah. yeah. No, that was difficult. That had a high degree of difficulty. Swing and a miss. Now, even if Jewett missed on the tag, the umpire could have made the argument that he was out of the baseline. It looked like he may have been close. The 0-1. And this is hit in the air. Hornung with a catch. It's the Jackson Hornung show.
here in this bottom of the third. We'll head on to the top of the fourth. Post 77 leading one to nothing on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. That's Bottom of the fourth inning, 7, 8, and 9 due up for post 77. Alex Melfi, Drew Rancatori, and Nick Calabrese. A 1 0 lead for Ashland post 77. Taking a look at the pitch count 48 for Kavanaugh, 51 for Minaya as we start the fourth. And pitch inside. That's a good take. Someone from Philadelphia is tuning into the broadcast. Gets a piece of this one to left field, and that is a fair ball. And he is going to march oh. over to second. No, is it foul? foul? Wow, that was close. Foul ball, one and one. That's foul by probably about four or five inches. It was very close. It certainly was. I thought initially the umpire was waving fair, but then he switched the hand yeah, and it was foul. Usually in a two-man system, it would be the call of the plate umpire. Obviously, we have three umpires in the state tournament, so it's the call of the third base umpire in this case. The 1-1. One, one. What power by Alex Amalfi. Outside. Yeah, that's a solid poke down that third baseline. He hits those in BP regularly, but hasn't been uh, translating to game situations. Wind up and the pitch. Outside. Thank you, Tom, by the way, for that insect repellent. No problem. You can pay me later. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I brought some cash. The 3-1. Outside, and he draws the walk. He's racking his pitch count up. That was a great plate appearance by Alex Melvin. Drew Rancatori will step in. Reached on an error his last time up. Back in the second inning. Post 77 loaded the bases that inning, but we're not able to score any runs. Post 77 got a few guys that can run, but Alex Amalfi is not one. Out. Nope. Strike. He's been pretty consistent with uh, that pitch relatively high and outside. Oh, I don't have a lot of complaints right yeah, now. Yeah, that's all, all, all you can ask for is consistency. We, and, you know, it can be tough to come by. It's been very consistent. Wind up and the pitch. Unlike the game against Sandwich. Which He's was, not buying that. The home plate umpire is not buying that gang. That, that was Yeah, I think atrocious. that one was uh, a little too low. I think the high, if it's outside, the higher you go, the better chances you have to be called straight. There was a horrendous home plate call on Drew Rankatori to end a game the other day. And this is up the right side. That's going to trickle into right field. Amalfi is going to be stopped at second. Two on, no outs for post 77. That'll bring up Nick Calabrese. Well, not that it would really make you feel much better, Larry, but you know, there, ha there has been some talking at the state level, too. I know some folks at the state level have not been too impressed. With this, this is some of the calls in general in the yeah. whole, whole tournament. Well, we'd so. go back to the zone uh, playoffs. There yep. was some bad stuff, we'll just call it. And I think uh, Calabrese is going to lay down the play. And Henry Chaco, the catcher, wants a conversation with Manaya. Because he's a, he's a fabulous bunker. And this kid's not throwing a lot of breaking stuff. It's far easier to bunt on a fastball than a rotating ball. Oh, you got two on, no one out. Here's a fresh batter up at the plate, so big decision here. Do you bunt? Do you get the green light? Is it straight away? Larry's bunting. I'm bunting. What's Tom doing? I'm going to take a couple pitches and see if this guy can throw a strike. I'm with you on that one. Well, he's the nine hitter. An ideals. There's a bunt. There it is. Throw to third, it's going to get away, and here comes a run. Alex Amalfi heading home. It's 2 0 post 77. Another error for the pitcher. 
That is the fourth error of the game for Lawrence. Rankatori to third, Calabrese to second. You know, I think the fans that uh, maybe were affiliated with other teams like Post 77 as the underdog. I They're think rooting so. for an upset. Now we're going to have the coach, Julio Ramos, talk to his pitcher. Kevin Balowitz is due up. And he's going to have two on with no outs and a run already in. 2 nothing post 77. Yeah, the coach was just moaning and groaning to the home plate umpire. Maybe thinking that the runner had some interference over there at third. But did not, that, not a case whatsoever to be made for that. Yeah. There's nothing there. That, the, the only thing that's there is a bad throw. That's, that's it. I agree. Well, that about sums it up. And Larry, they listen to you. They bunted. And look what happens. Yeah. It's his third error. You know what? Maybe Larry should be out there with Obed helping yeah. out. <laughs> hey, maybe he'll give me a helmet. Jake's top <laughs> assistant, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll wear a helmet to work tomorrow. See what happens to my Well, you could certainly use a helmet. That's for sure. Bellow, right. so steps in. Takes that one outside. He's just struggling with his strike zone after that eight pitch first inning. Yep. It hasn't been lights out or close to it. Increase since. the patience, grind away, make him work. You got two runs on the board. Looking for two more here. You got two ducks on the pond. Yeah, Lawrence, the infielders are playing. They want to cut the run down at the plate. Fouled away. One and one. So post 77 wins today. Well, they have if they win. Coach Obed came right up to the press box yesterday and says, don't let us win today because we got so-and-so tomorrow and so-and-so well, after that. It's not over till it's over. As this is hit in the air right side, foul out of play. You remember that famous Kevin Millar yeah, quote? 2004. Yeah. How can we forget that? Yeah. One don't and let two. let us win today. But we for Pedro tomorrow and show the next day. Well, playoff scenario, post 77, if they win today would play Sandwich tomorrow, 5 p.m. right here at Funeral Field. Then they have to win that game to have another game with Lawrence right after. Sandwich just had a long drive. And this is up the left side, right to the third baseman. Throw to first. It's going to be off the mark, and here comes another post-77 run. All kinds of defensive issues for Lawrence, and another run right behind him. Two will score. It's a 4 nothing ball game. It's a partisan crowd here. It's a partisan crowd. Drew Rancatori scores. Calabrese right behind him. The question is, are they going to send Calabrese back? Oh, yeah. Oh, they'll send it back. You can get too greedy, Tom, on over. So Balowitz over at second base. Calabrese is plated for the moment, four to nothing. <laughs> And he will stay plated. A 4 0 lead for post 77. Fifth defensive error of the game by Lawrence. An errant throw by the third baseman. And four of them are throwing errors. Here's Brandon Grover. And he'll get a piece of this one over to left field. That's going to be trouble. That'll drop. Fair ball. And everybody's going to be safe. Runners on first and third. Still no outs. And Grover can fly. You know, coach Jerry Johnson, the former coach of Post 77, was just sitting behind me. He says, I like you guys. I said, well, I'm not playing. He says, no, I like Ashland. <laughs> I like Ashland. And here comes the manager. He's probably going to remove Minaya. There, there is warm-up action for Lawrence. Jackson Horning is due up next. Ball's being taken from him. The ball will be taken by the manager, Julio Ramos, and that'll be the day for Fran Manaya. A 4-0 lead for post-77 here in the top of the fourth. We'll take a timeout on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Armani Paulino is the new pitcher for Lawrence as Jackson Horning set to step in. A 4 nothing lead for post-77. Three runs have scored this inning. And there's still two on, no outs. Runners on first and third. Grover over at first. Balowitz at third. The book still open on Fran Manaya, the starter. He is responsible for both runners on. I don't know these late nights, Tom. Uh, certainly getting to me. 
Sorry to hear that, Larry. Well, we've got Florida. We've got Naples, Florida, Philadelphia, PA represented on our YouTube live feed. Paulino deals. There's strike one. Kind of like that. Whipped it right in there. Yeah. Polino working from the stretch. There's a breaking pitch in there for strike two. Okay. To the number three hitter, he throws the bender. Fastball in a pretty decent <laughs> lazy curveball. What's going through Jackson's Ryan? You throw that one more time, I'm gonna murder. The 0-2, outside, runner taking off from first, throw up, not in time. Stolen base for Brendan Grover. Well, we've seen Checo's hose. Grover's got great speed. Got so. a slide right there, though, on that play. Yeah, I agree. Got a slide. You made that a lot closer than, than that should have been. If you slide, that play's not close. Well, there was no base running play. And I'm him. surprised they even threw with a man on third. Well, I don't think he got speed on third base. But still, uh, I know it could I be agree. one of those set plays. The one-two pitch. It's going to hit him. Inside. Two and two. I think Jackson hoped it was going to hit him. Yeah, I think he did too. I thought it was going in from here too, honestly. And then it just kind of curved right back in at the last second. But Polino's breaking pitches have some good movement. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. But they hang. They, they, they zig and they zag. The 2-2. Two -two. Hornung gets a piece of this up the left side. That's a fair ball. The third baseman didn't even move. One run is in. 5 nothing. post 77. An RBI single for Jackson Hornung. Kevin yep. Balowitz scores. Brennan Grover up to third. So we've seen Checo's hose from behind the plate. If they sent Grover, Obid's mind said he's going to send Hornung. All five post-77 runs are unearned. We haven't seen... Uh, What's this young gentleman's name, the pitcher? We haven't seen his pickoff move yet. Armani Polino set to yeah. deal to Dom Cavanaugh, pitcher versus pitcher. Cavanaugh hits this one sky high, right side foul territory, and it's caught by the catcher. Tag up. And the runner from third thought about tagging, but he will go back. One away, that'll bring up Sean Jewett. It would have been a decent foot race to the plate. He might have won it. Yeah, yeah. I think Jake knows that, frustrated that they couldn't get that one. I, I have had that happen once. I had a sack fly on a pop foul to the catcher up at Marlboro High School. At Marlboro High? At Marlboro High. I mean, this was before they redid that field two years ago. Yep. A pop, uh, sack fly and a pop foul to the catcher. Was it as nice as Ashland Middle School's field? Uh, uh, back then, yeah, maybe. John Jewett is one for two today, had an RBI single last inning to score the first run of the day for post-77. But, but now they've got brand new turf, it looks gorgeous up there. Oh yeah, well, I live there, I haven't seen it. Followed away back towards us. You paid for it though. Yeah, I, well, all right, so I paid for a little money. But uh, Sean Jewett had a base hit uh, to score the first run. Uh, that was very close at the plate. I'm so glad Larry listens to what I say. Well, Tom, I just learned how that scoreboard works just this <laughs> afternoon. I've Did you? I've been here 10 years. So are you going to are you gonna do scoreboard for the next game? I heard, I I heard they're it. looking for volunteers. You know, Dawson McMillan, former Hopkins and Hill, said, I said, how many outs, Dawson? He goes, the scoreboard says two. I said, is that what that means? I've been looking at the little lights up there. One and one. Up high, runner taking off from first. The throw over is off the mark. Runner from third trying to score, and he's out. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, first and third, one out. Drew it at the plate. Was Exciting that necessary? Play. Certainly was. Credit Jackson Hornham with a stolen base. But Steve, seriously, I've been looking at those little tiny light bulbs that say balls and strikes for 10 years. Although that, that scoreboard has only been up since 2013. Because he was sitting in, well, here's the story. He was sitting in storage for three years. 
the one one this is up the left side slow roller and the shortstop can't pick it up and the run is going to score it's six nothing post 77 Hornung comes all the way around Peralta just completely missed the ball as he tried to pick it up and Sean Jewett is aboard these are their defensive starters. That's the sixth error of the game for Lawrence. Cole Glassburn will step in. What's going on? Some really bad defense. Sloppiness. Post 77 has batted around. This is up the right side. That's a fair ball. Jewett heading. Over to third now, he thought twice about it. Back to second, a single for Glassburn. Do you remember bleeders, seeing eyes, uh, bloopers? What game was that, the 6-2 uh, game? Shrewsbury, was the bleeders, the bloopers, the seeing eye hits? Well, you, you guys are yep. here for that one. It was a 6-3 game you're talking you about over Shrewsbury. Right. Yes. Sorry. Alex Amalfi steps in, two on, two outs. A 6 nothing lead for post-77. There's a strike. And not a single run is earned. You know. That's if, what you get for bad defense. If Hermione throws that hang and break and pitch again, I hope. Uh... There's a strike. Nice breaking pitch there. That deserves to be belted 375 feet. Oh, and two on Amelfi. Has absolutely no bite to it whatsoever. Melfi has been hit by a pitch and walked so far today. Outside, gets away from the catcher. Both runners are going to advance. Wild pitch. The, the discussion before the game from people that are very well respected and people that are not very well respected was that Lawrence had no incentive to win this game and they were going to throw this game and make Ashland play two. Tomorrow. Yeah, so then they could play and use up whatever a, a Ashley team, has for yeah, pitch. Regardless of right. who plays or, or wins in that game. Swing and a miss. There's out number three, but post 77, due to a number of errors, plates five runs in the inning, and they lead it six to nothing as we head to the bottom of the fourth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fourth inning, due up for Lawrence is four, five, and six. Christian Verona, the first baseman. Henry Chaco, the catcher, and Ivinson Batista, the right fielder. A six nothing lead for post 77. Six errors in the game for Lawrence. Pretty unbelievable. Ridiculous. And I dare you to put those. Uh, defensive miss, miss cues. Well, uh, I, I, I want you to edit them up. All right. Put the March of the Gladiators music to it <laughs> and then add on the uh, base running triple play. <laughs> Loop it. Loop it. Worst plays of the state tournament. Well, you, know, you, should, you should do like all low lights. Here's exactly what not to do. And then maybe we can form a clinic or something. Well, yeah, that's a know? good idea. Yeah. That's, that's a good idea. Good money maker. We've got viewers tuning in from near Cape Cod, Lakeville, Massachusetts. That's outside, gets away from Jewett. Now what's significant about Lakeville, Massachusetts, Steve? You tell me, Larry. Ted Williams used to have his summer camp there. It's a 2-1 count on okay. Verona. Did you know that? Ted Williams, uh, number nine for the Red yeah. Sox? Who's that? Oh. Who? Sorry. <laughs> Never heard of him. He was the greatest hitter ever have lived. That Barry Bonds. Just ask him. Outside. All right, well, if you're Kavanaugh, you got to keep control here because this is a must win game for you. Three and one. Yeah, Lawrence is a good team, and you don't want to let them back into this thing. Don't give them life. You have all the momentum on your side right now. Yeah, let's keep it that way. You, you had to work hard to get it. Now keep it. But you Suck it. all the oxygen out of their dugout from their fans. Yeah. Put them to bed. Jewett walks out to try to calm down Kavanaugh. Three and one. That's where Sean Jewett has really matured from 2017 to 2019. 
He's the boss. Here's the 3 1. And this is hit in the air left side foul. Full count. Of course, Sean's from Holliston. Saw some Holliston folks here as I was down near the main gate before no we walked kidding. back up here. Yep. There are, there are, there are some Holliston folks here tonight. Well, they are on the, the uh, town line, so yep. it's not too far. Payoff pitch outside. It's a walk. Henry Chaco, the catcher, will step in. He's no threat to steal, so Dominic is just going to work on the hitter and get outs. Shorten the game. Kavanaugh working from the stretch with a runner on. Ball one. Fans in the bleachers wanted a strike call. Looking from here. Domna can't pick over because only a bad thing can happen. The kid does not have a four foot lead. And this is up the middle. Picked up by Glassburn. Flipped to Hornung for one throw to first. No problem. Four, six, three. And that's how you play defense. Yeah, twin killing. We just saw a twin killing, right, Steve? Yep. Iverson Batista, the right fielder, will step in. Beautiful play, great defense. That's now how the defense is played right there. His high school coach is really happy with that play. Should be. We had a long conversation. And this is hit in the air Not in a right enough. field. That'll be a two-out single. Cole's got incredible leaping ability, but not that high. <laughs> I don't think Shaquille O'Neal could have got that. Bad. And he's got a great sense of humor. I know you love to uh, ride him, bust him a little bit, but you know, he, him and I were texting the other night before it was like 11:30 at night before his start. He goes, hey, Larry, I'm preparing for my start. Yeah, right now. And he did a great job too. I, I he did, did a remarkable job. I said, you just pitch Cole Glassburn game. You don't pitch anybody else's game. You throw the ball when you want to throw. He was unbelievable yesterday. To go against that lineup and give up punched him in one the run and pitch after a and a 90 minute rain delay and finish the game. Unbelievable. Dom, couldn't, Dom. Couldn't ask for a better performance. Dom. Dom, you get two outs. Don't throw a ball. I know the guy's speedy. There's a strike. John Batista is grounded out so far today. His pitch count is pretty decent right now. It certainly is. He hasn't been in a stress inning yet. Runner back safe. Hopefully for his and the team's sake, he can keep it that way. Is that 45 give, heading to the Don't end. give Lawrence any energy by throwing the ball away. That hit the batter. Or that. Two on, two outs. Louis Cologne, the left fielder, will step in. Jake Wilbert gonna have a combo with uh, Dom. Coach Obi wants to calm him down. I think he's probably just saying, hey, it's two outs. Let's get out of the city. Calm down. Let's go. Yeah. I think that's what's happening. The ump didn't give him 30 seconds. Yeah, he's doing a pretty well. It's not the major leagues though. There's no official timer here, and also no limit on mound visits. Well, the umpire is probably saying, "All right, it's 10 o'clock. Let's go." Yeah, it's a truly uh, judgment call. It's past Larry's bedtime. It's way past. Luis Cologne stepping in. He reached on a force out. His only plate appearance. The town of Milford doesn't want Mr. Magoo on their roadways. No. You're trying a little. Bach. Bach call. Both runners advance. 
Steve. Inside move, throw to second, wide bar. Didn't come to a set. That's what I think the base umpire was saying. He was looking right at it. This is up the middle, and that's going to get through. One run is in, and here comes another. And just like that, it's a 6-2 game. Two RBI single for Lewis Cologne. That is not what you want after you just had a five-run inning, mostly due to errors. Sloppy stuff by Dom Cavanaugh in this inning. That's a gift right there. All gifts. Merry Christmas. Ryan Guerrero steps in. This Lawrence team can hit. Yep. Don't and they can get back in. Right. They can get back into this game at any time. They could put some serious pressure on post 77 right now. The 0 1. Outside gets away from Jewett, and here goes Cologne up to second. Cavanaugh having all kinds of struggles on the mound right now. No warm up activity in the 77 bullpen. Jewett yelling at him, calm down. Yeah, he needs to calm down. Time called by the hitter. That's a smart move, I give the hitter credit. The 1-1. One, one. Yes, he did. It is a strike, one and two. Outside. Hermini in the uh, batting lineup for uh, whoever started. Minie, whatever. And this is a little trickler picked up by Horn. I bobble, throw to first. It's not in time. Another post 77 error. Wheels on the bus go round and round. First and third, two outs, two in for Lawrence. Here's the leadoff hitter, Kebler Peralta. There's trouble written all over the place, especially with this kid. And this is hit high in the air, over to center field, and caught for the third out. But Lawrence plates two and makes things interesting. It's a 6-2 to two ball game as we head to the top of the fifth on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the fifth inning, a 6-2 to two post-77 lead. 8-9 and 1 due up, Drew Rankatori, Nick Calabrese, Kevin Balowitz. Just all kinds of sloppiness last inning, mostly by Lawrence, but post 77's defensive part of the inning wasn't pretty either. Well, they got to go back to what worked, being patient. Just don't start off because you get this kid on the mound, he's throwing slop, hanging, breaking pitches. So Rankatori will step in. He's one for two today, singled and reached on an error. He scored a run. That pitch outside, one and oh. As we've seen this season, Drew can really yank it. Lowell's covering that line. Swing and a miss. What do you think, he's hitting maybe 75 tops, that fastball? Yeah, it's not a whole lot of velocity, but a lot of movement. Two and one. Uh, there's no scouts here. They do have that area in front of home plate roped off for them, and I have not seen one in uh, the games I've been here for. 
I've seen a couple. There's a strike. It used to be a lot more back there. Of course, now you have all these travel showcases and all that stuff. You're talking about college coaches, right? Uh, college scouts, right? No. Major leagues. Fouled away. No. Like the ones that were watching Mike Vassell at BC High last year? The 48 of them? <laughs> For his near perfect game? He struggled at Virginia this year, big time. I would have taken the three and a half mil. Here's the 2 2 outside. Wind up in the pitch, outside, it's a walk. That's it. Good plate appearance there by Rankatori. Nick Calabrese will step in. I think I mentioned that this kid was a pretty good punter, but this is not a bunting situation, not with Drew Rankatori on base. Well, he had a bunt last inning that forced an error. Worked out pretty good. Yeah. Pitch outside, one and oh. You know, Post 77's got a 15 year old in Lawrence Tang. Pretty big boy, 6'1, about 185, I'd say. Gets a piece of this one, takes a couple hops, picked up by the second baseman, throw to first. They got him. Rankatori up to second. This kid's half his size. And bring up Kevin Balowitz. We've yet to see Lawrence Tang make an appearance during this playoff run for post 77. He's going to be a good player for post 77 for the next four or five years. He certainly will. He did have a couple of appearances during the zone playoffs. Because there's strike one of Balowitz. And he had a 348-foot uh, bomb in Hudson. Yes, that's about what a foot shy of that fence. <laughs> Going out. There's strike two. Runner on second, one out. The 0-2, outside, gets away from the catcher. Rankatori stays put. It's, it's a good thing he did. Still has not recovered from that hamstring injury. Dr. Larry over here. Look, I, I check in with our players before the game. They give me scoop. <laughs> Called strike, two-way. Nasty breaking pitch there. That'll bring up Brendan Grover. It'd be nice to have what they gave back. Yes, yeah, so at least get one here. You got a man on second. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. Grover is one for three on the day. Flown out, grounded out, and singled. It's also stolen a base. Swing and a miss. Oh, and two. You think he's going to drop a little breaking pitch in here? Swing and a miss. There's out number three. We'll move along to the bottom of the fifth, a 6-2 post-77 lead on the Asher Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the fifth inning, two, three, and four due up for Lawrence. A 6-2 post-77 lead. See what happens here with Dominic Cavanaugh. He had total control of the game going into that last half inning. He certainly did. And a ball Pena will step in. Tom 
Cavanaugh remains on the mound. Outside. He was listening to music earlier while doing batting practice in the cage. Fouled away. One and one. Set to deliver, just outside. Reports are in there are some Hopkinton Hiller players in the stands supporting Cole Glassburn and Drew Rancatori. 2-1, hit in the air, right side, and it is going to be caught by Calabrese. He had to run a long ways to get that one but he's able to track it down for the first out. Yeah, he can grab it, that's trouble. Right there, great range. Yeah, That'll he got up. after it. Certainly did. That'll bring up Luis Mejia. He made a similar type effort at Natick, but ran, in, ran out of room, right into the uh, plastic on the fence. Inside, one and oh. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away, is it in play? No. Jewett almost ran into the dugout. The horse collar by Jake Obed. One and one. Jake Obed guarding the gate of the dugout. The gatekeeper. Yes, he was. Wind up and the pitch. Fouled away. The foul ball, Steve, in the earlier uh, or later part of uh, last game that almost came in this press box. You know, that was a, and that would have been a. Back in my day, working in this press box, we did have a few roll in here. Strike three, two away. You know what I say to that? Sit down. Yep. Grab some pine, young man. First strike out of the game for Cavanaugh. Christian Verona will step in. It does take something to get a foul ball in here, though. It has to be, I think, just slow enough to clear that fence. Right. Good and backspin. Th and then sink into here. Right. If Dom can get this hitter. It'll give him a lot of confidence. Down low. There's actually one, Larry, I think, maybe back in around 2013 or 14, it went through that window and out the door. Very impressive. Oh, what was wrong with that pitch, Steve? Nothing. Two and oh. I think the batter just flinched a little bit. Maybe he fooled the umpire, but it looks like a strike from here. Kavanaugh gets the sign he likes and deals. Outside, three and oh. Didn't all the bad stuff start with a walk last night? And then a hit batsman or something? Just remember. This is a baseball game. It's not a charity. Right. No handing out free stuff. Well, all the bad stuff started after Ivinson Batista hit a single with two outs right after a double play. Now there's a walk. Henry Chaco, the catcher, will step in. Jewett telling Dom Cavanaugh he's yanking his pitches with some similar type motion. And this runner is not going anywhere, so don't even bother picking over. Just focus on the hitter, throw strikes. When he throws strikes, he's been fine. Work on Henry Checo. You got two outs, don't worry about the man at first. Throw strikes. Checo has been hit by a pitch and grounded into a double play. There's a strike. <laughs> Beautiful pitch, handcuffed him right there. Right in the fist. Oh. 
There's strike two. If I'm a Lawrence fan, I'll say, get your bat off your shoulder and swing it. Yep. The 0-2. Hit in the air, two right center. And really ranging over is Brendan Grover to make the catch. That was hit a long way. Brendan Grover can just cover so much ground. And that is the third out of the bottom of the fifth to the top of the sixth we go. Post 77 leading six to two on the Ashton Legion Baseball Network. Top of the sixth inning, a 6-2 lead for post 77, three, four, and five do up. Jackson Hornung, Dom Cavanaugh, and Sean Jewett. He had a mile high pop up his last time. First pitch is ball one. Jackson's strong enough to go 375. Outside. Did you hear somebody yell strike? I did. <laughs> okay. Paulino deals. Strike one. Two and one. It's the uh, Lawrence fans, FYI. Inside. Three and one. Ashley got to do some damage to this kid. That's outside, Horning draws the walk. Tom Cavanaugh will step in. Kavanaugh has flown out twice and reached on an error. He also scored a run, the first run of the game. Back in the third inning. A pitch up high and outside, 1 and 0. Oh. Trying to help his own cause here. Now it looks like Coach Julio Ramos wants a discussion with his pitcher, Armani Parlino. So Ramos will come out for a chat with Paulino. I'm just going through my mind to see what kind of arms 77 has in that dugout, should they need to uh, replace Dom. Well, they're not at that point yet. Would they go with tomorrow night's starter and keep him under 19 pitches? No. No? I highly doubt it. Got to win tonight first, though. No, I understand. Well, I don't know if Matty Tomaselli's in attendance tonight. He could be an option. Yeah, I know, but... Outside. If Hermione keeps jerking pitches like that, Ramos is going out of the dugout to get him. Here's the 2-0. Inside, three and O. Oh. And when he's throwing inside, he's going dangerously close to hitting the batter. It certainly is. So I would sit on this, make the kid prove he can throw a strike. Outside, there's another walk, back to back walks. That'll bring up Sean Jewett. If I drove all the way down from Lawrence to see this game, I'd be pretty disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to agree. Well, I mean, you got to pay seven dollars to get in. Correct. Outside. Nice move by the catcher, Henry Chaco. I give him a 7.67 on the degree of difficulty of catching yeah. that ball. And you know why the price is seven bucks, right? Well, I mean, I'm not grading pizza, but 7.67, well, like an like a Olympic diving. It was in honor of post-77, right? <laughs> you got me. Here's the one up. There's a strike. Oh. Well, not quite. Back when I was the assistant director of this two years ago, we were doing the pricing, and some folks who want to save five bucks, I pushed for 10, so we went in the middle and made a seven. 
Steve, you're always trying to overcharge people. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one. Just being honest about it. Do you ask the administrator for a few extra shekels in your check when you do a game? Steve tries to charge me for being on the broadcast. Right? <laughs> Three and one. I'm getting paid way too much. I agree. we got to cut your salary way down. Right. Give more to Connor. Three and one is the count. i got to work enjoy. overtime during the day just to feed my family because <laughs> you are... You <laughs> There's a strike. Throw to second. Runner back safe. Full no, count. Uh, well, if you're a post-77 right. base runner right now, <laughs> don't do anything crazy. Yeah. Be alert. There's still no outs. So you got yeah. two on. You have a chance for more runs here. A golden chance to blow this thing open. And this is on the ground. Very slow roller. Picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first. Off the mark. And it pushes the first baseman off. Everybody's safe. Bases loaded. No outs for post 77. I'm giving that a single. As an umpire, Steve, how close was he to runners interference? Tippy toeing by the uh, fielder. Zero. Zero? Zero. Okay. As long as it doesn't hit him. But there's going to be a conversation between the home plate umpire and the first base umpire. Well, I mean, the defender has the. They're talking about the ball. whether there was runners interference. Right? The, the, the fielder has the right to the ball. Yes, but the base runner stopped in an attempt to let the fielder get to the ball, in my well, opinion. Well, now they're having a power. And Obud will lose his mind. Nothing Everybody's happened. safe. They didn't change it. Yeah, I'm not really sure if that was the question. I think the question may have been if he actually held the bag at first. Because he almost did hold that. The Horning stopped well, yeah. to let the shortstop get to the ball. Correct. There's no interference there. There's nothing to see on that play. As long as it doesn't hit you and you don't make contact with the fielder, then you're fine. Well, there's a play the other night where the home plate umpire overruled the base umpire on a on a out at second. Well, base from overruled. They, they, they had a away. conference first. Swing in oh. and miss by Glasper. Well, yeah. Somebody asked for a conference, but he made the call from 127 feet away to overturn the base umpire that was five feet away, and that's what the. Uh, the big beef for the row was. That's just then an error for pulling him off the bag, right? Yeah. And this uh -oh. is hit in the air over to right field. Here comes Horning around to score. It's a 7-2 ball game. An RBI single for Cole Glassburn. All right, that's half the lead back. Cole Glassburn has been Mr. Clutch lately. Oh, yeah. I'm going to bring up Alex Amalfi. He needs a hit like oxygen, Tom. He really does. He's been hit by a pitch this game and walked and struck out. He had that beautiful hit down the right field line against Shrewsbury, but he's been really struggling with the stick. Swing and a miss there. And it's by his own admission. He did an interview and said he was struggling. 7-2 lead for post-77. That's fouled away, 0-2. Drew Rancatori due up next. Still no outs in the inning. Drew Rancatori drooling like a hungry lion on deck. Can't wait to get to Hermione. Paulino deals. And he gets a piece of this one, bobbled by Polino, picked up by the second baseman, thrown to first off the mark. He did not lay the tag on everybody, safe, and a run scores. Seventh error, or make that eighth error of the game for Lawrence. If I were a Lawrence fan, I'd be starting my engine up. <laughs> I, I a agree. Good speed plays on Route 28 in Lawrence. Shoot it up to third, glass burn up to second, and Melfi reaches on the error. That'll bring up Rankatori. A mistake by the shortstop and a mistake by the first baseman there on the tag. It's fouled away. Rankatori is one for two today. He reached on an error, singled, and walked. Also scored a run. You're going to add that to your weird stuff highlight uh, clip? I might have to. And this is hit in the air, left side foul. Well, most of the highlights is post-77 runs, and most of the post-77 runs have been scored on that crazy stuff, so 
There'll be a lot of that in the highlights. Yeah, well, just like you <laughs> threatened to do, add in that triple play from yesterday. Don't bury it in the archives of H game. <laughs> oh, and two is the count. They were talking about that at the uh, five. Uh, the game after yesterday's game. I heard uh, 77 ran into a triple play. You are correct. I think that's the first and only time you'll see this team do that. This is hit high in the air. Shallow center field, or excuse me, it was stayed in the infield, caught by the shortstop. Yep. Two away, or one right away. away. Infield fly rule anyway, so yep. what would have really mattered if he dropped it. So still only one out, and that'll bring up Nick Calabrese. Bases are loaded, four post 77. An eight to two lead, four post 77. They have plated two more runs in this sixth inning. If Ashland hangs on and wins this game, they have a date with Sandwich right here at Fino Field, 5 p.m. tomorrow. That sounded kind of... Uh... I'm not saying perverted. That date with sandwich? I don't know. Get your romantic. mind out of the gutter, Larry. Romantic. Well, sorry. Yeah, well, that's a better word. Romantic. I have a date with a sandwich when I well, get home. This is hit in the air. That'll drop into left center. One run is in. Here comes another run. The throw to third is in time. They got him, I think. Yep. But the yes, run they did. Two runs did score. Jewett scores. And Glassburn scores. It's a 10 to 2 game. Amalfi was trying to head to third. What's the barking about? He called him out. And he was tagged out. Calabrese reaches second on the throw in, but credit him with a two RBI single. I see some Lawrence fans trickling out towards the exit. That'll bring up Kevin Balowitz. Two outs in the inning. A 10 to 2 post 77 lead. What a missile that was. Certainly was. And Balowitz gets a piece of this. It's caught by the second baseman. But Ashland, post 77, plates four more runs in this inning. A 10 to two lead as we head to the bottom of the six on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the sixth inning, a 10 to two lead for post 77. Six, seven, and eight due up for Lawrence. Ivinson Batista, John Batista, and Lewis Colon. Tom Cavanaugh still in the game. Four more runs score in the top of the inning, four post 77. And a couple more errors were made by the struggling Lawrence defense. Eight errors now on the day for Lawrence. That is the most I've seen any team make in any game this season or maybe any other season. There's strike one to Batista. Eight errors in one game, that's, that's tough to do, Tom. I'd say so, Post 77 has two of their own. But their defense has certainly been a lot more clean than Lawrence, that one outside. One and one. I do remember one time when I was here doing a Milford game when Brian Mackey was still the coach. Milford had seven runs and no RBIs in the game. All pass balls, errors, all that good stuff. Might have been calling that game. Inside. And that hit him. So lead man on for Lawrence. Gonna bring up John Batista. Don't give him any gifts. Nope. We've gone over this before. Still not over. No, it's, you know, I know it's July, Christmas in July, but we're not celebrating Christmas now. No gifts. And I believe any chance at a mercy has been taken out of uh, play here. Correct. Since Lawrence is the home team, there's a strike to Batista. Now it's all about finishing the job. That's right. Checking at first, runner back safe. Pretty good check in there by Kavanaugh. The 0 1, fouled away.
Outside. One and two. And this is hit sky high. Infield fly roll in effect, it's caught. Actually, you'd have to have two on. Excuse me, that's right. Yeah. One away, that'll bring up Louis Colon. That's why we have a rules guy here, right? That's right. That's why we have our <laughs> rules expert. <laughs> Luis Colon is grounded out and single. A 10 to 2 lead for post 77. Here in the bottom of the six, one out, one on. There's a ball. He's going to swipe the bag, just let him go. Work the hitter. The 1 0. And this is hit in the air over to right center. That'll get down for a hit. Batista heading over to third, and he will get there with ease. It's first and third with 1 0. Brian Guerrero, the DH, to step in. Well, it's a good thing that runner didn't go home because there was no umpire there for the, the, that, that possible play at the plate. Well, it's a good thing that Brandon Guerrero didn't throw the ball to third because uh, Dom yeah. was backing up home plate. But Lawrence sort of feeds off itself. There's a strike. Sternick and Tomaselli toiling down in the uh, 77 bullpen. And this is hit in the air right side foul. And it's caught by the bullpen pitcher. Yeah, pretty impressive. The 0-2. Right in on his hand stump. Runners on the corners, one out. And this is up the left side. That's a fair ball, bobbled by Amelfi. Throw to first, not in time. A run scores. So Guerrero reaches on the error. Batista around to score. It's a 10 to three ball game. Cologne up to second. That'll bring up Keebler Peralta, a shortstop and leadoff man. Pitch counts coming into play. Well, Coach Obed would love it if Kavanaugh could get out of this inning with possibly a doubleheader tomorrow as this is hit sky high, left side. And arranging way to his right to make the catch is Brandon Grover. And there's get two outs. Can Certainly can. Two outs. That'll bring up Anibal Pena. Kavanaugh deals. Outside. Outside. Two and oh. Unofficially, Dom's at 95 pitches. He can pitch to this hitter. He had won the next inning if he retires his kid. Oh. Hit him. Ouch. 
Bases loaded. I'm gonna bring up Louis Mejia. And here comes Coach Obit. I think he's going to take the baseball. I think you have to. He's got some pitches left. I think he'll let him in. Uh, maybe not. It's a 10 to three post 77 lead. Bases are loaded with two outs for Lawrence. And it looks like Coach Obit is going to let Kavanaugh try to finish this inning. For those of you who don't know, he is the youngest manager in Massachusetts American League Legion history. Jake Obit, 21 year old, rising junior, Human University of Massachusetts at Amherst. And what a job he has done with this team this year. Do we have a Bach? Yep. Third Bach of the game by Po 77. And they just gift wrap Lawrence a run. Just took his foot off the back of the rubber. Pena up to second, Guerrero up to third. This is up the first base side. What a catch by Rankatori. How about that to end the inning? If that was a Malfi, it would have been over his head. 10 to four in this very weird ball game yes. as we head to the top of the seventh. He had one like that yesterday. He certainly Still did. Still it. He is quite the first baseman. We're heading into the top of the seventh. 10 to four, Ashland on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Top of the seventh inning, two, three, and four do up for post 77, Brandon Grover, Jackson, Horning, Dom, Cavanaugh. 10 to four lead for Ashland. And pitch outside from Polino, who's out there to finish it off for Lawrence. So if post 77 doesn't let Lawrence back in this game, they will play tomorrow night, 5 p.m. against Sandwich. And then the winner of that game goes on to play Lawrence in the championship game. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, did that hit him? No. Two and O. I know, there are a lot of people from different teams that would love to see Sandwich get rubbed out. There's a strike. I'm not mentioning any names. And this is hit in the air foul. It'll fill up the count. And of course with Sandwich, they're trying to do what they did in 2005 right here. They won the whole thing. Inside, there's a walk. Lead man on for post 77, Jackson Hornung will step in. Very curious to see how the attendance will be tomorrow. The last few times that Milford's hosted in 05 and 17, Milford was playing on the final day. Now, of course, this year they won't be, so it should be very intriguing. There's a strike. They may reduce the price on t-shirts, Tom. That is possible, Tom. That's good to know. Five lanes automated markdown basement. Here's the 01. That's fouled away. Will they reduce the price on admissions? No. <laughs> <laughs> on sausages? No. For you, Larry, they're gonna increase the price. Yeah. As many sausages as I've bought the last four or five days, they should give me a free. You need a sausage punch card. That's right. <laughs> That's fouled away. Right, like that hot dog place in the center of Hopkinton? Oh, and two remains the count. Pretty close to a free one on my card. There you go. I took a look at your card, by the way. You've been, you've been uh, racking some up. I haven't used my car lately. I should use it. This is driven into left field. That'll drop down, and that is going to roll all the way to the fence. Grover heading to third. Are they going to send him home? Yes, they are. Here he goes. And he will score with ease. 11 to 4, post 77. An RBI double for Jackson Hornung. Did our ace cameraman catch that bomb? I'm sure he did. 
Nodding his head in the affirmative. Tom Cavanaugh will step in. Well, the post-77 bats struggled the past two games, but boy, have they come alive tonight. Yeah, be patient and grind through. They must have heard our advice. Eight hits on the night for post-77. Certainly a lot of Lawrence errors, but the bats coming alive tonight, too. Pitch outside. Yeah, yesterday they were in danger of being low to sleep. It almost cost them a game. They were just so impatient at the plate. Here's the 1 0 outside. They hang in this kid out to dry. That's the strategy. Trying to save pitching, Barnes. Larry. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, so it's all about 11 to 4 lead, 4 post 77. Take over the team, kid. Yep, exactly right. It's unfortunate, but sometimes it just has to be done. Doesn't make for great TV, though. <laughs> what about my sleeping bag? This is up the left side foul. Two and one. Outside, three and one. Boss, can I take a break? Of course you can, Larry. Thank you. Outside, there's a walk throw to second, and it went off the runner into center field. He's going to advance to third, because why not? But he might be sent back. Since the ball hit him, maybe... Something with that. Looks like they're sending him back. So Kavanaugh drew the walk. Two on, no outs. Another run already in this inning for post 77. Sean Jewett set to step in. Steve, any uh, input to what happened there? Well, I think I think time was called because the catcher got hurt ah. on the play, and there's a question of when time was called. Well, at this point, it shouldn't really matter anyway. Not a lo no. lot of argument from Coach Obid. No, I think Jake was just verifying what happened. I think he knew what happened, just wanted to verify it. Like I said, the last thing you want on a hot night like this in a, kind of a lopsided game is a heated argument. You, know, you can save that stuff for tomorrow, I guess, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Save your energy. Larry just stating that Lawrence does not have anyone else available for tonight. This is hit high in the air. It is in foul territory now, and it is caught by the first baseman. Runners will stay put. A good effort there by Christian Verona. One away, two on. 11-4 post-77 lead. Cole Glassburn to step in. Second baseman, number two, Cole Glassburn. Well, Steve, after the first three games of the state tournament for post-77, I'm certainly glad I didn't need my heart pills for this one. Yeah. You wouldn't want to have to follow the words of Jack Edwards. Bring the extra bottle of hot pills. <laughs> have them in the bag just in case. <laughs> you never know when you might need them. And this is up the right side, and it is going to be picked up by the second baseman. Throw over, no problem. Both runners advance, throw to third. Two away. So Glassburn goes four to three, Warning up to third, Kavanaugh up to second. Alex Amalfi will head to the plate. Well, you know, that super close game yesterday, I was getting worried about you. The thing to myself as I was watching it work is all I'm gonna need is an extra bottle of hot pills. And it looks like we're gonna have a pinch hitter here. That's right. Well, it's been a lot of crazy endings lately for these state tournament games for post 77. Sam Farrell is going to pinch hit 
for Amalfi. Let's see if Farrell stays in the game as well. There was a situation yesterday where they brought Ben Fink in a pinch hit for Amalfi. He was playing second base. And then tried to put Amalfi back in at second base, but had to put Fink into the game. So what's the story with Fink? Is he good enough to bat but not field or? Pretty much. Okay. He has a torn shoulder. Yeah. I, but he uh, did make a play yesterday. I kind of figured that when he got hurt with the Nada game, right? He got hurt. That's right. Yeah, it That's right. Yeah, exactly. They have, they have him right in front of us. But he did make a good ground out play yesterday. And you know what? He doesn't need both of his shoulders to play. No. That's why I have two of them. That's right. Shoulder smolder. Exactly. Farrell gets a piece of this one. In the left field it goes. Here comes the post 77 run. It's 12 to 4. An RBI single for Sam Farrell. Jackson Horning scores. That'll bring up Drew Rankatori. Kavanaugh over at third, Farrell at first. And are we going to have a relief pitcher? There is two outs in the inning. And the ball will be taken by Julio Ramos. And I believe that means we'll have some defensive changes for Lawrence, since I believe they have no one left on the bench. So with the pitching change, we'll take a timeout. Post 77 leading Lawrence 12 to four on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Ryan Guerrero moves over from designated hitter to pitcher. And he is in the game to face Drew Rankatori. Runners on the corners, two outs. Two more runs have scored this inning. A 12 to four lead, four post 77. And things are looking good. Four post 77 in this one. And of course, if they complete this victory, which they have no excuse not to at this point, they'll be there for the final day of the state tournament. They'll start off with Sandwich at 5 o'clock game and then have to take on Lawrence if they beat Sandwich. Obviously, if Sandwich wins, they will advance to the championship game. Wind up in the pitch, and that hit him. Did that hit him? No, no went contact. behind his back. The runner from third thought about coming home, but stayed put. Now a throw into center field for some reason. The runner from third is going to score. I totally no, missed what happened he there. He thought it hit him and started retreating back to first. It's a live ball. The ball's not dead. Throw to second. You can try and get him if he wanders off the base. So another run for post 77 and another strange run. 13 of 4. Actually saw something just like this happen to him in a Newport Gulls game a few weeks ago. Very, very similar. You know, unless you hear the, the ump say dead ball time, then it's a live ball. Outside. You might want to reconsider the mercy rule with the way this game's going. <laughs> yeah. Outside. Nope. Two and one. We're opening up the strike zone a little bit, I think, Steve. Well, it is a nine-run game. It is hot out. It is late. Umpire discretion. You know, um, I'm sure the, uh, the man behind the plate is sweating up a storm back there. And this is up the left side. Love by the shortstop throw to first. We'll get away from the first baseman. And another run is in for post 77. It's 14 of four. Alex Amalfi comes around to score. Rankatori reaches on the ninth error of the game for Lawrence. 
Now bring up Nick Calabrese. Here's a strike. Well, I must say, Steve, I don't know what the mentality for Lawrence was coming into this game. It wasn't a good one. But they were 3 and 0 in the state tournament coming into this game, and everything has just been a disaster yep. tonight for them. And this is up the middle, back to the pitcher, and they have a clean throw to first. First one all night. One to three for out number three, but post 77, Plates four more runs and they lead it 14 to four. Lawrence down to their final three outs. Up next on the Ashland Legion Baseball Network. Bottom of the seventh inning, a new pitcher for post 77. Louis Dennison makes his state tournament debut. Due up for Lawrence is four, five, and six. Christian Verona, Henry Chaco, and Ivinson Batista. Who do you guys think the um, Gandhi's going to tonight? Oh, to Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> I got to admit, that is the funniest thing you've probably ever said on a broadcast. Yeah, here's more sign language. <laughs> Lesson. There's a double one. A double eagle I just got. Check swing, he didn't hold. Oh, and one. Yeah, he's got an interesting uh, delivery, Louis Dennison. He almost drags his knuckles on the ground. He goes so low. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything, but there it is. A little outside, one and one. Oh, there's the uh, Lawrence first base coach. 14-4 to four lead, four post 77. I am impressed with the buses they drive down in. Yeah, they certainly uh, have a nice team bus. Bus is when they've got a full squad, uh, when they bring more than nine No, it seems to even have buses, you know. What were the other nine guys doing tonight? Watching the broadcast. <laughs> Resting up for tomorrow. Okay. The two on inside. Now we saw him earlier this year, Tom, and he pitched three very, very good innings. Oh, yeah. He hasn't thrown in a while for post 77. And this is hit in the air, and that is driven into center field. Here goes Verona over to second base, and he is going to start things off with a double. Oh. <laughs> Last per turn around, got a tag on him. Verona well, Grover stepped off at all. He was out. Well, Grover can throw the 90-plus from the outfield. Henry Checo will step in. That ball was sizzled. Inside, look out. Jack knifed him. You know, well, you know the rule. If there's an injury here and he can't continue, they gotta end the game, correct? Can't play with eight? Is that a... Up the left side, foul. Oh, so, so you're saying Lawrence doesn't have any players, they period? They have nothing. How? They don't. They don't have it. They've already used up whatever they, they... They don't have anybody. What do you understand? They so don't so no one. Nobody. Nobody. They've got to switch if they want to play musical chairs. Should they tie this game up? They've got to... Well, that's what they'll do. Unless someone gets injured, then they'll have real problems. Well, they moved their DH over to pitcher last inning. There's no DH, is there? Oh, yeah. They used up to... Yeah, the DH is now the pitcher. The one, two. Angel Hernandez, what happened? Runner taking off, swing and a miss. I don't know what the hitter was swinging that one for, but Dennison will take it one away. And that'll bring up Ivinson Batista, the right fielder. That kid wasn't that fast, so he was just hoping he got thrown out to end the game. Possibly. That was a horrible swing by Checo. Runner from second did advance. That was a nice pitch from Dennison, strike one. Well, I think Louis Dennison is someone to look out for in the next couple of years. 
Do you agree, Steve? Or I'd agree with that. Sophomore over at Holliston. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. No, you, what, no, you hit him. You can't advance. Go back to him. <laughs> this is Monopoly. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Go back to they place. didn't implement the steal home rule yet at this level. Steal first? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, steal first. Now, that would be something, huh? Yeah, you might see it someday. Go, oh, there's a little anger going on. Somebody's going to... Well, somebody is not happy. Louis Dennison appeared seven times on the mound for Holliston High School this year. 382 ERA. He threw 11 innings, gave up six runs. Wasn't too bad at all for Holliston. So John Batista steps back in. I don't know what that commotion was about. All kinds of craziness tonight. There's a strike, runner takes off. Oh, 77 doesn't care at this point. Well, I think someone was saying something to the first base coach and he was responding back. I think the, the plate umpire went up to him and told him, you know, let's not get involved in that crap, you know. Here's a strike. Oh, he didn't like it. Well, you know, Larry, it's a 10-run game. It's after 11 o'clock. The umps, you know, would well, like to go home to their Jake families. Obit, well, Jake Obit isn't taking any chances. He's got bull, bullpen activity down there. Oh, it's a safe tournament. He can't take chances. That's right. Up the left side, that is a foul ball. Yes. Yep. Great work right there by the home plate umpire looking right at it. Certainly Doing was. A great job. And that was a good job by Kavanaugh. Oh, How and two remains the count. Tonight? Hmm? How would you rank this crew if you were? A I think the plate umpire has, has, has been very good. I think the umpire has been I think fantastic. Yeah. If only he was the umpire here on Sunday. There's, yeah, oh. exactly. They're very consistent. That's all you can ask for. Could be post-77. uh the bite of the championship game. Yeah. I know there's been a lot of complaints about the Empire and crew so far. This crew, I think, has done good, though. Wind up and the pitch. Gets away from the catcher. Here comes a run. It's a 14 to 5 game. Wild pitch allows Arona to score. Up to third is Batista. Well, you can ask post 59 fans how they would rate the uh, umpiring for some of their games. A balk. What was that about? Louis not used to. All right. Pitching. So Batista comes home to score 14 to 6. That's now four box in the game. All by post 77. For Ashland, yeah. I don't think I've seen f f four blocks all year. And this is up the middle. That's a base hit. One out single for Batista. That'll bring up Lewis Colon. I think Coach Obit might have seen enough. Yep. Well, he's not pulling the plug yet. I smell a double play coming right now. Oh, the guys from the bullpen are coming back in, so he might let Louis face this batter here. But it's a ground ball, and you're all set. The runner's going to so. take off. Yeah, probably. Here's a strike. I'm shocked. Outside runner taking off the throw up by Jewett. Not in time. Stolen base for Batista. Did that chuck you, Steve? You know, if that throw was a little to the right, he's able to slap that tag on a little lot faster. Here's the 1-1. One, one. In the air for a strike. One and two. He's just pounding that zone.
The one, two. Swing and a miss, out number two. And there you go, two down, one to go. Just want to send a shout out to all the hardworking volunteers who make this tournament work. Absolutely. This has been some long days. There's a lot asked of them, and they all do a great job. They really do. Jake so. Obit is asking for a pitch count on Dennison. Brian Guerrero steps in. Is he? Yeah. One and O oh on Guerrero. Two away. Runner on. So Dennison is not available tomorrow. Swing and a miss. One and one. Dennison has two strikeouts here in the inning. 20 pitch mark. Go over 20. Can't pitch on consecutive days. I don't know about that rule. I don't like the rules. Well, Dr. Andrews makes the rules. You don't make the rules. And this is going to go up the left side. Love by Kavanaugh. Throw to first. In time. And that's going to do it for the ball game. Ashland post 77 lives to see another day as they take the victory over Lawrence 14 to 6. Post 77 will take on Sandwich tomorrow, 5 p.m. And then the winner of that game will take on Lawrence in the championship game right here at Fino Field, Ashland. Post 77, victorious over Lawrence, 14 to six. Certainly a lot of errors tonight by this Lawrence team, but Post 77's bats also got going, which was very promising to see after three games where their bats kind of struggled. It's nice to see the Post 77 offense back in tune tonight. The final score for the final time, Ashland over Lawrence. 14-6, post-77, advancing to the final day of the state championship here at Fino Field tomorrow night. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partners Larry Sacklad and Steve Watson. I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for joining us for Ashland Legion Baseball. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Have a good night, everybody.